Hello everyone. First of all, uh, we would like to apologize for the delay of the of the release of this video, and uh, we can justify the delay. We were busy in uh, presentation of this blueprinting only at MUHS level, and you will be happy to hear that now this is not limited to our project, but MUHS has picked this up. And uh, now we all are bound, all the medical colleges, all the subjects which come under MUHS are bound to implement this blueprint in assessment. So you should be happy, you are fortunate I can say uh, that you will be sensitized before the notification or before the circular comes from MUHS, you will be well sensitized with blueprinting in assessment. So we have already received your question papers, which you have set for either paper one or paper two without using the blueprints. We have gone through those papers. That was the step one of our project. Now today is step two, where we will be sensitizing you on uh, the weightage calculation as well as the blueprinting preparation for assessments. Now this sensitization will be in two parts. The first part that is weightage calculation I will be covering in this video and the second part that is blueprint preparation will be covered in the second video by Dr. Yogesh. So the objectives for this session are to learn various attributes of effective assessment and threats to those attributes, to learn the need and purpose of blueprinting in assessment, to prepare blueprint after calculating the weightage and to set test paper with blueprint in participants own speciality. So basically the sensitization work is only with the third objective that is weightage calculation which I will be covering in detail in this video but the first two objectives are just to have a background on the assessment. So coming to attributes of effective assessment, when we talk about blueprinting in assessment, we must be having little knowledge about attributes of effective assessment. We have all heard of these terminologies like validity. Validity is the degree to which an assessment measures what it purports to, which means suppose I want to test the psychomotor skills of my students. I cannot assess that with the help of a theory question paper. For that, I need to have OSCE or OSP. So theory question paper assesses knowledge. So validity is explain, it, this example explains the meaning of validity. So it measures what it intends to measure. Second is the reliability which relates to precision or reproducibility. For example, if, a, if the responses to a specific question, to a particular question, I mean you are getting various different responses from the students for the same question, that means the reliability is very low. So in that case, we what, what can be the solution? We can just structure that question. I will give you one example. Like for example, if I ask a question like, describe jaundice, I will be getting various different answers for that question. But if I make it structured, like describe jaundice under following heads, maybe the definition, the causes, the management, etc. So in that case, I will get specific answers and this is how reliability can be increased. The third is accountability. Now the Assessment must be accountable to the all the stakeholders. This means the assessment, the scores of the assessment should be defensible. Now here I would like to give you one example. Uh, during COVID, for the COVID batch, throughout the Maharashtra, we have observed that the scores were low. So we are able to defend that, why the scores were low. We can defend that saying, because the teaching was online, because the students were under emotional stress, fear of COVID. So that, that is the reason of low scores all over the country and also all under in all colleges under MUHS. 
so this is how we should be defensible for the test results whatever are the results we are we should be defensible for that that explains the accountability the next attribute is flexibility now it it explains or it means uh, all the aspects are assessed by multiple assessments or by at multiple times and by multiple means so like again i would like to give the example of uh, covid period where we used online uh, platform for teaching and learning so that is how it should be flexible it should be uh, possible i mean uh, it should it should solve its purpose like we did in uh, online teaching next attribute is comprehensiveness which means it should be able to validate or assess all the aspects all the aspects like knowledge skills attributes comprehensively and that's why we have you know multiple examinations multiple internal assessments so that we cover all the aspects all possible aspects so that is comprehensiveness so as assessment should be comprehensive next is feasibility it should be practically possible it should be cost effective that explains feasibility and all of us know uh, very well the meaning of feasibility it should be actually practically possible another uh, attribute is timeliness which means it should be timely the assessment should be timely early assessment or delay in the assessment will you know disrupt its, its purpose like we cannot assess our uh, first mbbs students uh, in in the after the second mbbs we have to assess in between we have to assess in time uh, another example here which which i would like to give you uh, for timeliness is um, like suppose uh, you might have seen the muhs last year's question paper of uh, biochemistry where i noticed you might have also noticed that 90% of the portion or the questions were uh, clinical application based which i feel is not timely like in first mbba students are not that much exposed to the clinical scenarios and hence their assessment completely on cl clinical applications is not fair so that's the reason uh, that explains the this attribute of timeliness and next is relevance uh, the test scores whatever test results we get it should be useful to improve the teaching and learning to have reforms in the curriculum that's how the test results or the assessment becomes relevant so these are the attributes of effective assessment moving ahead we will see now what are the threats to those attributes so what do you mean by threats to these attributes so any factor that interferes with the proposed meaningful interpretation of assessment data scores ratings is a threat to validity now it is categorized into two types the first is construct under representation the term itself tells there is under representation of the items the second is construct irrelevant variant variance which means which again the term tells you that the items are flawed or biased so let us see the first type that is construct under representation what all things comes under these this um, uh, for all assessments construct under representation is a major threat to validity for example too few items to sample domain adequately for example again uh, if if a topic is big like in our subject in biochemistry metabolisms are big molecular biology is big and we are not giving uh, enough questions on that we are not giving enough weightage to that topic and we are asking very few questions on that topic so that is one of the threats to the validity of the uh, question paper uh, too few items to sample domain, uh, domain adequately this is what i have explained next is biased or unrepresentative sample of domain again um, the item is biased or unrepresentative to the sample i will also explain how to i mean i will also explain how blueprint un, uh, takes care of sampling so this point will be covered there also next is low, low reliability of the scores or ratings low generalizability and too few independent raters so these are all the threats for validity the second types 
and the type is construct irrelevant variance where the item itself is flawed the case is flawed the wrong it is wrongly asked or it is biased uh the difficulty level is in inappropriate which is not uh, able to discriminate or differentiate between high achievers and low achievers either the questions are too easy or too difficult which uh, which is a threat to the validity then cheating or insecure items wherein uh, uh, say half of the batch knows what are, what are the questions somehow the questions got leaked to half of the batch or maybe full batch so this also is a threat to the validity then indefensible passing score methods so method itself is faulty which is used for assessment testing to the test which means i have set the paper and uh, 10 days before the exam i am going in the class and i am discussing all those questions which are asked in the theory question paper this this explains testing the test so again this is a threat to the validity poorly trained raters so rater bias is there sometimes where uh, some raters feel uh, this question is written very nicely others don't feel so again here comes the role of blueprinting and uh, the model answers which are required to be framed while uh, framing the question paper itself and the systematic rater error like halo anti halo effect which means when during the assessment of theory question papers if we get continuously if we get 10 question papers badly written and suddenly the 11th question paper is average but the feeling is it is very good because previous 10 papers were very bad or the vice vice versa where uh, 10 papers are very good and one paper is average but we we feel that this paper is very poorly written this is halo and anti halo effect leniency very lenient sometimes we ki sabko pass karna hai this attitude uh, we keep sometimes and central tendency which i have observed uh, a very common attitude ki somewhere between uh, 50 to 60% scores we keep so that uh, less students are failed and uh, you know there should not be any objections from the universities so we keep the scores in between 50 to 60 uh, this is this explains the central tendency so all these are threats to the validity uh, let's see uh, how what is why sampling is important now this is what this circle explains what is what we expect from the students what is expected to be taught rather what this this explains it is a curriculum whole syllabus whole content areas now this green circle uh, denotes what we teach them so we cannot take everything into our teaching right so this is this part of the whole curriculum we teach and next is assessed like we hardly have two three internal assessments and one university summative assessment so we cannot cover each and every objective in these exams so a part of it is assessed that means a sample of it is assessed and that's the reason you no know, a big curriculum and a sample of it is to be assessed so sampling becomes very important how to choose this questions how to choose this sample here sample means the items the questions so this becomes very important aspects so if we choose this sample this items very carefully and appropriately which is uh, of course uh, possible with the help of blueprint then the purpose of assessment is solved otherwise it fails okay so even in clinical research we do sampling similarly here we have to have a good sampling we have to have good questions in the theory question paper and that's why proper sampling of the syllabus is required and as i said solution to all this is nothing but blueprint preparing blueprint now what is this blueprint so before we go to actual weightage calculation uh, methodology let's see in few sentences what is blueprint it is a template for the question paper setter and the examiner examiner it is a reference framework for the question paper setter so that we prepare the questions according to the accepted norms accepted guidelines given by nmc and nhs it addresses all the domains of learning like knowledge skills attitudes the levels the competencies it addresses all it delineates the purpose and scope of the assessment it provides guidelines for obtaining a representative sample of the assessment which is in congruent with the curriculum and it determines the weightage of the 
content areas. It aligns various competencies with course content and appropriate assessment tool. It ensures fairness and difficulty. It increases transparency. Possibility of assessment of hidden curriculum is greatly reduced. Like here, for example, while assessing theory question papers or even during VIVAs, if we talk about blueprinting for practical examinations or VIVA, uh, the sometimes we uh, focus on hidden curriculum hidden curriculum like here we can uh, uh, explain like in theory paper we sometimes see a uh, handwriting is very good or the presentation is very well done so we give less uh, less uh, weightage to the content and sometimes we give more weightage to the handwriting and all so this is uh, this is nothing but hidden curriculum which should not happen we should be uh, focused on the content so this is all this problem is also solved with the blueprinting and finally, it reduces two major validity threats. So, we can say blueprints are like pets and children, difficult to appreciate or understand unless they are yours. So, let's have our own blueprint so that we will appreciate it more, you will appreciate it more. Okay. Now coming to the steps of weightage calculation and preparation of blueprints or we can see the requirements for these this the first requirement is we should have the assessment scheme and which we all have I will also show the slide but we all are aware of the assessment scheme where we have uh, MCQ for 20 marks one marks each we have BAQs for 20 marks two marks each where one one BAQ is extra so we have to say, set 11 BAQs. Then we have nine SAQs out of which we have to solve eight, which is for five marks each. And we have to set three LAQs out of which two, one is optional. So we have to solve and it is for 10 marks each. So that is the scheme of assessment which MUHS has given us. And uh, we are, uh, we are, we all are having it and are aware of it. Second is we need the rating scales, weightage rating scales. And I will show you the weightage rating scale for preclinical subject. It is different for para and clinical subjects, but we will just focus on the preclinical subject rating scale. And uh, we should also have, uh, we should also know what percentage of the question paper should be recall, comprehension and application. So it is also well defined in the literature. So I will provide you that also. And finally, you should have MS Office Excel or Open Office to have the, uh, to prepare the blueprints. So I will mainly here focus on the weightage calculation for which we need uh, two things, the assessment scheme as well as the domain, the percentage of the domain. Now in weightage calculation, the first step is listing all the competencies, the content area of biochemistry here and clubbing those competencies. Like in biochemistry, we have 89 competencies, but we cannot have 89 topics while preparing the blueprinting blueprint because uh, then it will be difficult to set the question paper if we have eight if we put 89 competencies so we have to club some relevant competencies so clubbing can be done in two different ways the first is based on the relevance of the content area like if you see this yellow table or excel here I have clubbed in the first uh, row, uh, we have clubbed basic biochemistry that is cell and extracellular matrix. Similarly, here we have clubbed onco oncology, oncogenesis along with immunity. So based on the relevance of the topic, we have to first club these competencies so that it should come down so as to fit into two papers. It should not be too many. Like we can have maximum 20, 20 or 15, 15 in each paper. So that way we have to club it. This is one way of clubbing. The second way by which we can uh, club the competencies is based on the groups of topics or competencies given by the MCI. So MCI has already given us, uh, uh, already clubbed the competencies for us. Like in this uh, table, you can see uh, competency number 5.1 
to 5.5 all these are club under the topic of chemistry and metabolism of proteins so we can very well take this as it is chemistry and metabolism of proteins here we have taken under which these five competencies are club so this is how this is the first step of uh, weightage calculation and blueprint preparation so this is clubbing now the second is decide the assessment tool now here obviously we are talking about theory question paper so we have already decided the tool is theory question paper now the skeleton or the scheme we all know i have already discussed now here the point which is to be kept in mind is though the paper is for 100 marks for students we have to set paper for 117 marks so we have to consider this 117 marks while calculating the weightage because we have to set those many questions for 117 marks okay so this is the skeleton which is ready with all of us now next is third step is use of rating scales to decide the weightage of each content area of the syllabus now for pre clinical subject we have the rating scale like this where if the topic is has no clinical application or very less clinical application we rate it as 1 if the topic is moderate has moderate clinical application we rate it as 2 and if the topic has is highly or high has high clinical application we rate it as 3 so this is very simple for the pre clinical subjects there are other rating scales for para clinical and clinical subject but let us not go into details of that we will focus on our uh, our um, scale which is used for pre clinical subject so this this is very simple so here i will give you one example like chemistry of carbohydrate it has very less uh, clinical application so i will rate it as 1 but suppose i have club chemistry with metabolism of carbohydrates so there is some uh, clinical application in the um, uh, metabolism part so i can rate it as 2 so it totally depends on the subject expert what rating is to be given another example if the topic is like acid base balance it is highly uh, it has high clinical application so we will rate it as 3 so this is how the topics the competencies which we have already clubbed and put into content areas we have to rate them this is one criteria of uh, for weightage calculation now we were we are using and many people those who are using blueprints for the question paper they are they are using this criteria but since we have implemented this blueprints in our internal assessment since last 4 5 years we observe that a few topics like molecular biology which has so many lectures like 9 to 10 lectures but its clinical application is not very high as compared to acid base balance which has just two lectures so in such cases we observe that the weightage which is uh, given to the acid base balance is more or almost equivalent to the molecular molecular biology which we felt is little unfair uh, so we worked on that uh, and we we worked on that and we developed one formula based on uh, pythagoras principle pythagoras theorem where uh, the teaching hours are also considered so here for weightage calculation we are using two different criterias one is the rating scale uh, depending on the clinical application and the another one is number of teaching hours so we are getting now uh, better results and better quality papers by using these two criteria so after this let us see the Uh, the weightage given to the different uh, levels that is recall comprehension and application now actually in the cognitive domain there are six levels but while setting the question paper it becomes very difficult to set the questions of six different levels so uh, arbitrary arbitrarily these six levels are converted into these three that is recall comprehension and application and now it becomes easy to set the question paper or to set the question based on the, these three levels so for phase 1 we will just see the phase 1 here the question paper the 50% of the question paper should be recall based that is memory based 
25 percent should be comprehension where the learner the student needs to think and 25 percent should be application based which is actually having a lot of clinical application so this is the distribution which is given for the basic sciences subjects if we go in the clinical subjects the clinical uh, application will be will be having more percentage as compared to the recall so this is how it goes from phase to uh, goes on changing from phase to phase so let's remember only for phase 1 that is for uh, uh, biochemistry anatomy and physiology we the weightage is uh, 15 25 and 25 for recall comprehension and application respectively so now we have the skeleton of the theory question paper we have the um, the criteria for the scale uh, uh, criteria the combined criteria that is which is uh, prepared by us one is already there in literature the another one we have developed it based on the number of hours and we also have the percentage of recall application recall comprehension and application the level of the domain so now we have this now this is the complete picture which shows all aspects of the blueprint or a template i can say here uh, these are the competencies the first column talks about competency now here you can see here it is written competency number 1.1 and then 9.1 to 9.3 which means we have clubbed a few competencies either based on its relevance or as per the nmc or mhs guidelines now uh, whether it is core or non core in biochemistry let me tell you 100% is core except for one small uh, competency which is non core so we can consider it as a 100% core so we have to write core yes why for core and then uh, the teaching hours again uh, take care that all the competencies which are clubbed the total teaching hours should come here so for cell and extracellular matrix we take 1 hour each so i have written here teaching hours as 2 then the rating scale uh, the basic clin uh, science clinical application rating here the clinical application for this topic cell and extracellular uh, extracellular matrix is very low uh, doesn't have much clinical application so i have rated it as 1 again it depends on the expert what you are going to rate it depends on the expert now based on these uh, things filled in the yellow uh, cells we get the weightage to be given to each topic now this weightage i again should repeat it this weightage weightage is calculated based on the clinical application to that particular topic and the number of teaching hours so this weightage is calculated and automatically with the help of the templates which we have prepared so this is the template we will be sharing the templates with you before we go for blueprinting now uh, let me tell this is the last point which i would like to stress on here uh, we have uh, for the biochemistry subject we have already um, clubbed the competencies and we have already calculated the weightage for each competency or each clubbed topic and uh, everything is ready as recently as i said earlier we had a we were invited by muhs to conduct this blueprinting as um, MUHS want to implement this for the assessment, and uh, want to implement this for each subject and um, and for every medical college which comes under MUHS. So this template template will be now uh, used by all, and uh, so everything is ready. The sensitization which I have done is just for the sake of understanding how to calculate the weightage and what criteria we have used for calculating the weightage. Otherwise, we will. send you the ready made templates with weight calculated weightage and clubbed competencies so that is all about weightage calculate calculation the another part of the blueprint preparation that is the actual template preparation will be uh, taken up by dr yogesh in another um, video so thank you thank you very much